Hi, uh, in the previous session we discussed about vision um, and uh, I speak specifically about vision because there was a lot of emphasis, uh, emphasis put on why the eye is not a camera and uh, we discussed the mechanisms by which uh, uh, photons are uh, processed within the visual apparatus starting from the uh, retina and uh, all the way back to the uh, visual cortex and associatory uh, cortices. Uh, so, the story of the world as we see through the eye is actually built within the brain that is something which you should uh, understand and uh, and that uh, there, are, there, are, there are there is processing happening at each individual uh, step of the uh, apparatus. Uh, starting from the amount of light which gets into the eye which is regulated by the diameter of the pupil uh, to the, the some mechanisms which we study uh, now and uh, at each level of the retinal processing system uh, at the optic now within the colliculus uh, there are specific things which happen. Some of these are known to us because we can actually we have found out uh, we as in humans have found out uh, how this uh, data is getting processed from uh, uh, parts of the retina to various parts of the op uh, optic tract then back to the colliculus and, uh, and up to the uh, occipital cortex. So, but you can imagine that there is a lot more to be done to have a more comprehensive idea of the uh, of, of how we perceive uh, things visually. So, uh, a integral part of the system is the uh, control of eye movements. Now, uh, here again I will have to use the idea that the uh, eye is not equal to a camera and we will substantiate it in the uh, by again by using uh, eye movements as an example. So, when we uh, use the term eye movements it, it would indicate that uh, the purpose is from one point of fixation. to the next point of fixation. So, uh, so there, there, that would be the logical way in which we think about uh, eye movements. So, why do you need eye movements? Because you need to see different things and to perceive different things uh, at a very base level perceive things as, uh, as a threat. Uh, so, they, uh, so these are these are things which you would imagine that the eye has to be used to scan the immediate environment, and uh, and and uh, you know that would be the purpose of eye movements if you if you would if you would imagine. But uh, that kind of movement would not require the kind of complexity which I am about to describe. So when we study eye movements in um, Uh, we study some set of things. So, those set of things is what is listed over here. So, the first are called saccades, then you have which color? Per sweet, then you have virgins. And uh, an extension sort of is the vestibulo ocular reflex. So, that is a reflex uh, and uh, the others are not uh, actually uh, uh, reflex mechanisms they have different properties and we discuss the properties and then try to figure out if we can make sense of why the eye needs so much of different kinds of movements to uh, to perceive the environment around. 
Now, uh, human beings are mobile in the sense bipedal and mobile and uh, the uh, uh, we have a torso legs. Uh, now, legs mobility in a human being. So, mobility in a human being is you have a trunk, a head and eyes. Okay. So, uh, you would actually you know if you just control legs or the trunk, uh, you should be able to control the movement of the eyes. Uh, we also have the problem of head for which reason you need to you need to you need to uh, you need to you need to have eye movements are separate from uh, from movements of the leg trunk or the head so that's uh, that, that that's exactly so why do you need so much of individual movements you know these are individual movements which are recognizable and i would demonstrate to you how how recognizable these are uh, we start a discussion with saccades rapid uh, I think it is called ballistic uh, mostly unconscious sh relatively short amplitude So, rapid in a sense it is it is very fast. So, you have high frequency, low amplitude, amplitude movements and uh, it, it is within a vis what, what we would call as a visual scene. So, in a visual scene say you are looking at some object, you are still continuing to look at the object, but uh, that object is uh, you know the eye does not statis statically view the object, the sta eye does this micro movements and it is those micro movements which is uh, which is which are called as saccades. So, that is where I think I should uh, give you an example. So, this is an example taken again from candle and uh, so uh, So, uh, somebody, somebody, this is Yaba's 1967, in which uh, somebody tried uh, making out fixation points. So, you know, you can, you can map. You, they have done some method by which they can determine fixation. And uh, given a scene, say, a scene is a individual picture. So, this is an individual picture which is there, and then you try to find out how the eye goes about doing its analysis. And this is the kind of eye movements which are there. Now, uh, th it does not mean that you know it, it is all saccades. What I mean to say is that uh, all of these are integrated movements, you do not split. But the purpose of understanding, I, uh, for the purpose of understanding and obviously for uh, the terminologies which have been developed, I split it into two. But uh, what I meant is you know you do not capture the image for analysis in the head, you know you do not have a gigapixel. Uh, image generated from all the retinal processing and uh, line recognition, feature recognition, object recognition, multi object segmentation and then you do processing. No, no, it is the other way around. So, in the given uh, given photograph you can make out that then uh, the uh, individual objects are scrutinized. So, individual objects are scrutinized to varying extent based upon the interest and what the purpose of the entire exercise is. This is an artistic image I think. So, so yeah, so this is an unexpected visitor by somebody and uh, so it uh, saccades for selected fi fixation points and each individual point is not viewed as a point you know you have these micro movements which exist over there. And these these are these are the sort of nodes which are happening, and within those nodes there are very small individual movements. So this is the saccades which is happening within the eye, and uh, you can actually map it uh, into something like this. So you can make out that you know these are the points of interest. Generally, faces are uh, points of interest for uh, because we we as human beings are key to look for faces in a image or in a scene. A scene is dynamic uh, and uh, you are key to look at individual faces. 
So, uh, what is shown over here is the importance of the eye in trying to you know this entire image is split into uh, uh, split into obj uh, areas of interest. So, there are areas of interest within any scene not image please make a, this is this is this is one of the reasons why I was using that it is not a camera. And remember this is not that you know first generate the image and then you do the uh, saccades. The saccades are are used at the time of generating the image and that that is a key difference uh, uh, when when we think about uh, something like that. So, uh, so uh, these are the that is the that is the proof that is the proof of uh, saccades. You can observe uh, somebody who is looking at an object who is unconsciously and you can make out this minor flickering movements of the eye. So, those are the uh, those are the uh, saccadic movements. I will just describe these movements and then we will go to the analysis part after that. So, uh, saccades is one kind of movement. Now, uh, a next set of movements is Pursuit. Pursuit is common sense, you know, you have an object which is moving, and I keep my eye, uh, eye fixated onto the point, and that is through that is through the mechanism of pursuit. So, wherever the object is going, fixing the eye, I can track the uh, object, no head movement, no head movement, and that is that is pursuit. So, uh, so you can uh, you can do it in multiple directions, and that act actually is coordinated by the different muscles. So, mechanism of that is uh, so uh, mechanism of that is uh, you know there is uh, there is uh, and remember that the object although in my hand need not be the same. So, you can have an object moving in your visual scene and uh, the eye makes a conscious effort to uh, conscious effort to pursue the object and uh, so pursuing is on a given object of interest. And remember you it can be uh, interest, it can be conscious or unconscious. So, you can unconsciously pursue an object say for example, uh, and that is the phenomenon of nystagmus, uh, you are in a train. And uh, you know you you are looking at objects outside of the train, and then the objects are moving obviously at a very rapid pace, and then you have uh, so you pursue, remove, lock, and pursue something else. So that 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 sequence of uh, all these sequences uh, would result in nystagmus. So nystagmus can happen in nature, and it can also happen in various disease states which we study. So uh, that's what I meant by unconscious. Conscious of of course, in which you you are uh, consciously pursuing, keeping your head st uh, stiff. You are consciously uh, consciously asking your eyes to uh, uh, look at an object. Now. Uh, if we analyze uh, how a pursuit uh, goes down, so what would what what how would a pursuit be uh, you know computed? So uh, so the basic idea of uh, idea of good vision is uh, uh, keep object of interest in fovea. So, that is the uh, aim of the entire uh, aim of the entire mechanism. So, you need to keep an object which is uh, which is there in your visual scene within your uh, fovea. So, when said object uh, goes away from the fovea. Uh, correct fovea, which basically means the eye to 
reacquire the object. So, that, that would form the mechanism. So, you have a small change which is happening within the uh, small change which is happening within the object which is not on the fovea and you can compute the distance. The distance would give the velocity. So, the distance which has moved in unit time and then that gives the velocity and that would uh, that would give you the uh, amount of uh, uh, distance in unit time. So, so that gets uh, computed and that is how you uh, do the pursuit. So, two mechanisms are different. Remember saccades are small micro moments, small amplitude. They do not they do not go span across uh, the uh, entire visual field. Visual field if you remember is the amount of space which is which can be seen through your um, uh, the entire eye. So, uh, so there is a there is a lot of area which is uh, which can be covered. The eye has a smaller part, and then you can look at extremes and uh, cover the entire span. So, within that visual scene, you have uh, you have pursuit which can uh, which can uh, which can uh, which can uh, fix it on a given object. Now we look at versions. We know that. Um, uh, you know you have a lens and then uh, at around um, you know um, an object from in infinity would would converge to the focal point so so that so uh, when, when it is at infinity so how do you ensure that uh, something which is very close by uh, gets fixed to the focal point you ensure that uh, these uh, you know uh, how do I represent that? I need two eyes actually. So, so that happens when you converge both your eyes. So, visual axis would be here, visual axis will be here to the fovea for an object and as the object comes closer, the eyes go closer to each other and so that is, uh, so this is eye movement. So, as an object uh, moves closer to the eye, you have eye movement which which helps in focusing. So, along with the eye movement there are other things which is uh, changing the diameter of uh, diameter of the uh, pupil which is uh, constriction, then the lens changes its shape. then eyes move towards each other. Yeah, uh, see both pursuit and uh, uh, versions are sort of common sense uh, things. So, how do you see something close by? So, you have an object which is uh, distant and then when it is coming closer to you, when it is coming closer to you, your eyes have to move closer to each other so that you still retain. Uh, fixation at the uh, point. So, pursuit uh, virgins, these are simple to uh, recognize. Now, uh, the an extension of the logic is uh, the vestibulo ocular reflex. So, uh, when the head moves, so the head moves still uh, you know fixation on a given object. So, here I am using the camera, I am turning my head, it is the inverse of fixation. So, in inverse of uh, fixation because in fixation what happens is, sorry uh, in pursuit what happens is uh, you are pursuing the object. Here it is the other way around, I am ensuring that my eye, uh, the gaze, uh, eyes remain focused on a particular object in spite of my head moving in various directions. So, that is that sort of uh, inverse of that. Now, how uh, the mechanism is mediated to the, the vestibulo ocular reflex. 
remember somewhere in the uh, discussion on West, uh, pathways I told that there is a sub, uh, lot uh, component of uh, uh, fibers which uh, uh, go to the uh, superior uh, colliculus and then inferior colliculus. And then there are pathways uh, to the vesti vestibular nuclei. So, vestibular nuclei is uh, vestibule is system is something related to balance. I think I should be covering it sometime later now balance. Uh, so, balance is uh, you know uh, the sense of um, uh, static and rotational equilibrium. So, uh, so the vestibular apparatus is the one of the mechanisms of uh, position. Vestibular system is for position, maintenance, position, uh, maintenance. So, what all the function, function ensures that you know whatever position you want to achieve, it is uh, perceived. I use the term perceived or sensed. So, uh, you would you would sense your position with the uh, this one. So, it is it is closely uh, related to the auditory system which is hearing. So, uh, you would you would have heard somebody friends family uh, somebody who suffered from a cold and then has this uh, giddiness episodes and things like that. So, that sort of indicates how this close uh, they are closely related within the uh, body and then sometime later I will discuss the mechanisms of that. So, uh, coming back to our current discussion. So, what the vestibular system does is it gives position information. Um, and uh, that position information is uh, transferred to the eye uh, muscle system. So, uh, so head head position is connected to eye position. Okay, that's simple. So you, when you move your head, there's something which happens which tells the eye to move in whatever direction which is uh, which is necessary to ensure that gaze does not get affected. So um, these are various kinds of uh, uh, kinds of uh, systems which are in place, and these systems are for the soul. Uh, these systems are for different kinds of uh, purposes. So the objective is to visualize something. So it's an active process. So, uh, active process in the sense that uh, it is it is based on uh, neuronal input, it is not passive from the uh, outside. So, there is some processing happening within your head and that determines how the eye uh, looks at from one place to another place. Why I said neural mechanism and not conscious is say suppose there is a bright light in your, uh, in your uh, field, uh, the natural tendency is to look at that bright light and uh, so th those are those are unconscious mechanisms. And um, so now we come to the question as uh, how it is mediated, how is uh, eye movements uh, mediated and uh, uh, in our uh, discussion from of uh, anatomy i told you that the orbit has i uh, there is some fat which sort of cushions the entire movement set and then you got uh, skeletal muscles now, skeletal muscles which basically, so one part is uh, connected to the orbit which is bone 
and another part is connected to the eyeball which is uh, which is to the uh, which is to the outer coverings of the eyeball so so the so uh, uh, most of the so the mechanism is actually a pulley mechanism pulley mechanism uh, so so it 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 uh, it uh, muscle contracts and the eye move, moves to one direction and uh, so so that's how this uh, this uh, the mechanism is implemented so what are the kinds of muscles which are involved a brief discussion so you have muscles um, superior inferior medial lateral superior sorry i think i should use a different color superior inferior So, this is four directions and these are oblique directions. So, oblique is, um, so we will name the muscles superior rectus, uh, inferior rectus, yes, rectus, rectus, and this is superior oblique inferior oblique so 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 many muscles are involved you know there are some six muscles which are responsible these are linear so this is these are linear these are uh, torsional so li uh, linear is uh, direction so uh, so this is lateral rectus for my right eye medial rectus superior rectus inferior rectus then uh, superior ob oblique and inferior oblique inferior oblique is what uh, this okay so we will denote the you no know, so all of this stuff is uh, superior cranial now 4 lateral rectus is cranial now 6 all the rest of it is 3. So, that is the uh, cranial nose, a very busy explanation, it is not necessary for you. So, uh, so that is the reason I went through in this, uh, uh, this fashion. So, for a given eye, uh, there are four cardinal uh, places. So, given I, you this is uh, lateral rectus, lateral rectus in which movement happens like this, medial rectus, uh, superior and inferior rectus, and uh, superior oblique, inferior oblique, uh, inferior oblique will be this one. So, uh, so torsional movements, so torsional movements and uh, linear movements. So, so these are the mechanisms and each of these me uh, mechanism this is for one eye, one eye. So, one eye in the sense that they, uh, so you need to yoke, uh, yoke uh, what you call synchronizing muscles and uh, when you see any object you obviously notice that both of your eyes move synchronized with each other. So, um, I synchrony I synchrony is done neurologically. So, how is that done? So, you have medial rectus with the uh, medial rectus of the left eye with the lateral rectus
so medial rectus and lateral rectus of other eye so uh, right eye left eye so right eye and left eye uh, right eye medial rectus is connected neurologically so you connect neurologically the left eye medial rectus with the right eye lateral rectus and that ensures that you have synchronous uh, movement of the eyes uh, towards one direction remember the, there are so many notions over here so you have visual field which is uh, related to the object which is there in space to which the retina you have a half symmetric uh, retina uh, not half symmetric it is uh, four quadrants and uh, because of the because of uh, uh, because of the lens you see inverted images uh, on the retina what i'm here speaking is gaze gaze in which uh, movement of the eye happens in one direction and that is by synchronizing uh, uh, different muscles in individual eyes so that's that's what is being uh, told superior would require superior of both sides to be connected so superior Anyway, I am not going into greater detail. There is a lot of yoking which happens between these oblique, oblique muscles, which uh, again I think I will have to refer back uh, to write it uh, sanely. Uh, uh, you can check up how the, those things, but uh, the objective is not to mention, it is not a biology class or a medicine class in which I would need to emphasize on that. The idea is to convey that there is asynchrony. Uh, individual eye movements. Now, eye synchrony uh, does not happen in except virgins. So, virgins is it is disconjugate movement. So, the others are called conjugate. So, say eye synchrony is called as conjugate movements. So, conjugate movements is when the eye moves uh, symmetrically to give a particular uh, uh, for various things it even saccades a conjugate, uh, pursuit is conjugate, vestibular ocular is obviously conjugate. The vergence is disconjugate uh, because uh, you need to you need to bring the eyes closer towards each other and then uh, that. So, uh, the key thing is it is all based uh, neurologically. So, you have um, to give you an example. Uh, in the midbrain, is the third now nucleus. Third now nucleus. Third now nucleus goes to medial rectus. Now, uh, so from the midbrain, uh, it goes into the uh, floor of the fourth ventricle. Which somewhere in the pons, where you have sixth nerve. nuclear so there is a connect and this is to the opposite side so one side medial rectus is connected to other side lateral rectus and all of this results in conjugate movements. So, so that is how uh, that is how. So, you have paths from each of this uh, nuclei and it is all hardwired it, you do not learn these things it is all hardwired within the brain and that is how you you switch from various parts in the brain uh, midbrain and pons uh, through dedicated fibers into uh, 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 the uh, 
uh, internal longitudinal bundle and uh, the nuclei are in different places and from each of these things uh, there are uh, there are uh, uh, there are uh, fibers which go to specific uh, nuclei so when you activate uh, when you activate the third now nucleus there is immediately activation in the opposite side fourth uh, sixth now nucleus now uh, if you look at a uh, higher level you know the uh, uh, the next level higher level is what is called as gaze centers so gaze centers uh, we will continue in the next session. <coughs>